saw him pursue the thylacine to the only part of its former range, which is still unexplored. I got a ring one night from a chap and uh, asked me if I was interested in thylacines. I said yes, and he said, I think I know where they are, son. And I said, I didn't say I heard that before, but what are you talking about? And he said, well, uh, <coughs> I'm a retired missionary, and I used to uh, be up in the high country in Irian Jaya. And um, he said one night I was showing some pictures of Australian animals to the locals. When he showed them a photo of a tiger, they all got excited and started talking and saying, it's up there, it's up there. His research revealed evidence of the thylacine's previous existence in Irian Jaya. But what tipped the scales for Ned was a letter from an American missionary still working in the remote high country. Locals described them as having heads and shoulders like the white man's dogs, but with huge, strong mouths. Tail is long and thin, almost the same length as the body. From the ribs to the hips, they have no intestines, meaning they are very thin in that area, and that part has stripes. That was enough to get me motivated to go. I knew I had to go then. We spent three days up there, uh, and we didn't see any sign of any wildlife at all. So we were very disappointed and we humped our way back down to base camp. When we got back down, the other hunters were very excited and wanted to know what we'd seen. And we said we didn't see anything. And, and uh, they called the small animals on couscous, they call them wiener. And they said, uh, I said, we didn't even see any wiener. And they said, no wiener, uh, no dobsegna. Now dobsegna is their word for thylacine. So that made sense. If there was no food for the uh, dobsegna, there'd be no dobsegna. There'd be a, Great trip to go back again and look in some of those caves where, where the other fellas said they'd seen them.